one welcome to this video which is based on a nervous system has organs such as the brain spinal cord and sense organs such as eyes and ears it also has receptors and sense organs and nerves that connect to other systems organs are made of nervous tissue as well as supportive blood vessels and connective tissue the nervous tissue contains two main kinds of cells neurons for intercellular communication and neural glia also known as glial cells which are essential to the survival and function of neurons preserve structure of the nervous tissue Central nervous system, the peripheral nervous system, and the enteric nervous system, which makes up the anatomical division of the central nervous system. Of the nervous system, sorry. Looking firstly at the central nervous system, this is composed of the brain and spinal cord. It has nervous tissue, connective tissue, and blood vessels. It functions to process and coordinate sensory data from inside and outside the body. Motor commands control the activities of the peripheral organs, for example, skeletal muscle. And higher functions of the brain include intelligence, memory, learning, and emotion. Nervous system. This includes all nervous tissue outside the central nervous system and the enteric nervous system. Delivers sensory information to the central nervous system. It carries motor commands to the peripheral tissues. And the nerves are known as peripheral nerves. So these are bundle of axons called nerve fibers with connective tissues and blood vessels. The cranial nerves connect to the brain and spinal nerves attached to the spinal cord. So, look at the functional division of the central nervous system. The central nervous system does not have functional divisions, but the peripheral nervous system is split into afferent and efferent divisions. So, firstly, let's look at the afferent. The afferent carries sensory information to the central nervous system from receptors and peripheral tissues and organs to the central nervous system. The receptors are sensory structures that respond to the change in the environment or specific stimuli. And the efferent division, on the other hand, carries motor commands from the central nervous system. From the central nervous system to the muscles, glands and adipose tissue. The cardiac organs that respond by doing something are called effectors and they are divided into somatic and autonomic. So looking solely now at the efferent division of the peripheral nervous system, let's look at two types, the somatic and the autonomic. The somatic controls skeletal muscle contractions and both voluntary and involuntary reflexes. And the autonomic controls subconscious actions, contractions of smooth and cardiac muscle and glandular secretions. The sympathetic division has a stimulating effect, for example, fight or flight. And the parasympathetic division has a relaxing effect. The enteric nervous system has an extensive network of neurons and nerve networks and walls of the GI tract. It has around 100 million neurons. The sympathetic and parasympathetic divisions both influence the ENS, but the ENS initiates and coordinates many complex reflexes locally and without instructions from the CNS. It is mainly responsible for short reflexes to control peristalsis, to, to, to coordinate peristalsis. So the purpose of this lecture is to find out how does a nervous system form during development. So you can see here from the embryo brain, four weeks, to five weeks to the adult brain. So you can see here the forebrain, midbrain, present, hindbrain present initially. Then you then you have the telencephalon, the diencephalon, the mesencephalon, and the myelencephalon. And then you can see the cerebrum being formed, the thalamus, hypothalamus, epithalamus, but not being shown actually there, midbrain, cere cerebellum, pons, and medulla oblongata in the adult brain. So the process of neuroinduction. So there are three gem layers in which the ectoderm goes to the nervous system. So you have ectoderm, mesoderm, endoderm. So the organizers of specialized region to introduce this nervous system. The ectoderm gives lice, rise to the neural plate. The neural plate is a pre is a precursor of essential peripheral nervous systems and it also has a neural groove and neural tube. Looking at neural anatomy. So you have the spinal column, the brain stem, which has the medulla, pons, and midbrain, the cerebellum, the diencephalon, which has the thalamus, basal ganglia, hypothalamus, and the cerebral cortex, which has the frontal, parietal, temporal, and occipital lobes. You can see here the cerebral cortex in the frontal lobe, the parietal lobe, the temporal lobe, and the occipital lobe. So here's another diagram of the brain. You can see here the frontal lobe, the parietal lobe. The temporal lobe and the olfactory cortex, the temporal lobe and the audio auditory association area, the auditory cortex, etc. So, looking specifically at diencephalon, 
So the thalamus relays and processes the sensory information. The hypothalamus controls emotions, autonomic functions, and hormone production. The brainstem relays information between the spinal cord and cerebellum. The midbrain processes the sight, sound, generates reflective somatic motor responses, maintains consciousness. The pons connects the cerebellum to the brainstem, and the medulla oblongata connects the brain to the spinal cord, relays sensory information to the thalamus, and regulates autonomic functions such as heart rate, blood pressure, and digestion. Now, let's move on to neurons. So, neurons are nerve cells specialised for intercellular communication. They function in communication, information processing, and control. They have an excitable plasma membrane and, generally, and are generally long lived and have a high metabolic rate. Most neurons lack centrioles, which is required for cell division, so they cannot undergo mitosis. So here's a diagram of the structure of the neuron. So you can see the dendritic branches, mitochondrions, the nucleolus, nucleus, dendrites, the axons, and the neurofilaments. And also you see the direction here of the axon potential from the presynaptic cell to the postsynaptic cell moving along the signal moves along the axon. You've also got the axon terminals, the axon hillock, etc. So the structure of the neurons involves cell body, dendroids, axons and telodendria. The cell body is also known as the soma. It is large around the nucleus. It has a it has a pericardion which is known as cytoplasm. Mitochondria produce energy, a rough endoplasmic epithelium and ribosomes that synthesize proteins. And neurofilaments which extend into the dendrites and axons providing support. So the dendrites are short and highly branched processes extending from the cell body. They have a key role in communication. There's also dendritic spines, which are fine processes of dendrites. They receive information for other neurons and can be up to 80-90% of the neuron surface area. The axon is a single long cytoplasmic process. It propagates electrical signals such as action potentials. The axoplasm is a cytoplasm of the axon which contains neurofibrils, neurotubules, enzymes and organelles. And otilodendria are fine extensions at the end of the axon and end in synaptic terminals. So in the nervous system, messages move from one location to another in the form of the action potential along axons. This message must be propagated along axons but also transferred from one cell to another. Synapses are specialised sites where neuron communities of another cell so you have the presynaptic neuron which sends the message and postsynaptic neuron which receives the message. Synapses also occur between a neuron and another type of postsynaptic cell, such as a skeletal muscle cell. Chemical synapses are the most common type of synapse between neurons. Only one type of synapse between the neurons and other cells, and cells are separated by synaptic cleft. Presynaptic cells send the message and postsynaptic cells receive the message. So chemical synapses occur between the axon terminal of the presynaptic terminal and the postsynaptic cell. So the presynaptic cell is usually a neuron. The synapse between a neuron and a skeletal muscle is called a neuromuscular junction. The synapse between a neuron and gland cell is known as a neuroglandular junction. So the definition of a neurotransmitter are chemical messengers contained within synaptic vesicles in the axon terminal presynaptic cells. They are released into the synaptic cleft. They affect receptors of postsynaptic membrane, changing its permeability and producing gradient potentials. They are broken down by enzymes and reabsorbed and reassembled by axon terminals. An example is acetylcholine and neuromuscular junction. So here you can see an arriving action potential depolarizes the axon terminal membrane of presynaptic neuron. And depolarization of the axon terminal membrane opens voltage gated calcium ion channels. And calcium ions enter the cytosol of the axon terminal. This results in acetylcholine release from the synaptic vesicle for exocytosis. Acetylcholine diffuses across the synaptic cleft and binds to the receptors in the postsynaptic membrane. Sodium potassium channels open, producing a graded depolarization due to sodium inflow. Depolarization ends as acetylcholine is broken down into acetate and choline by ACHE. The axon terminal net reabsorbs choline from the synaptic cleft and uses it to resynthesize ACHE. Via support and protect neurons, they provide a supportive framework for nervous tissue. They act as phagocytes and they help to regulate interstitial fluid. 
and different types of neural drive cells are, cut, are present within the CNS and the PNS. Entire neuron and periphery are covered by neural drive cells. For so Schwann cells make myelin and cover peripheral axons and can only cover one neuron. The satellite cells surround neuronal cell bodies in a granular and regulate fluid around the neurons. Astrocytes maintain the blood brain barrier and create a supportive framework for neurons and repair damaged nervous tissue. Epidymal cells or epithelial cells that line the passage within the brain and produce and maintain CSF, cerebrospinal fluid. Oligodendrocytes produce myelin that can myelinate several neurons at once and are involved in neuronal development and microglia of phagocytes. So that's the end of today's video. I hope you've enjoyed listening to this and please tune in to the next one. Thank you. Bye bye.